So here's your collapsible structure. It has one, two, three, four, and it has ten of those uh, leaf leaves here, and they're all differently colored, meaning they're independent, unique components, even though they all should be instances of one single component and all should have the same color. And the reason for that is that you uh, followed a, a workflow that's not that's not great. You first created a sketch, then you created a body from that, then you created a pattern from those bodies, and then you created components um, from those bodies. And that's really mm, not so great, at least in this particular assembly. So we're going to delete all that and start over from scratch with one leaf. So the second thing that I see here is that you've actually enabled contact sets. And in this case, they're not needed at all. And they're usually in conjunction with, um, with joints. They're just more of a problem than helpful. So we delete that as well. So here we have a single leaf. Um, and now we are left basically with the sketch and the body. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to create a component. And then I'm going to pull that sketch into the component. And as you can see, that also pulls the body into that component. So what we do now is, well, first of all, we're going to ground that component so it doesn't just float around. So the next thing uh, we are going to do is we're actually, and this took me a while to figure out the best way, I'm going to add two joint origins to this component. And in a moment, we'll see why. So this has the z-axis down, that's indicated by this being orange up here. The bottom is white. So we'll just flip this. And accept it. And we do another one, just like this. And we flip this as well, as well and accept that. So now we have two joint origins on those two edges in, uh, in the same orientation. That's, that's important. So right, the next thing that we are going to do is we're actually activating the overall structure and create a pattern. But in this case, we're not going to create a, rec uh, a circular pattern like before. We're going to create a rectangular pattern. And that's basically just there to copy those, those components, to create multiple components. So when we create this pattern, we need to pay attention to what we actually want to be patterning here. So in this case, we want to pattern the component. The default, I believe, is body, so you need to change that. So we pick the object. We're asked to pick a direction. And in this case, uh, spacing is pre-selected because I've worked with this before. But usually the default is extend, so change this to spacing. And then here we can specify spacing. Let's give that two millimeters. And we need 10 of those. Okay, so now we have our 10 leaves here. So right, the next thing that we are need to, needing to do is we simply join those with a revolute joint. And here's a why well, it's easy to have those joint origins all in the same orientation. We join this to this. Hang on. I think I made a mistake here. I picked the wrong component. Let's do Let's do this again. Oh yeah. Pick this and join it to this. Accept that. We'll repeat joint. And we are continuing that for all the other leaves.
All right, now we have uh, all those pieces joined and if you pull around them, they, they move. Um, let's undo this. So the first thing that we are going to do, we may want to just specify a sensible limit for only the first joint. In this case, the reason why I'm saying only the first joint, hey, wait a second, I forgot one thing. No, I didn't. I grounded this component. That's very important. Uh, in any assembly, you always have to have one component grounded. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to define a little sensible joint limit. You have 10 of those pieces. Um, so minimum, maximum, that's going to be looking at these, at the directions of these. Um, that needs to be 36 degrees. And there we go. So we can move this further than 36 degrees. That's 360 by 10 times because we have 10 leaves. All right, so, and we only need that for the first joint. Uh, we'll see in a moment why. So the next thing I'm going to do, simply um, add, where is it, motion links. So we can already see this does what we want it to do. And now we're just going to simply go ahead and add the motion links. That we're missing. If we don't know which motion links we created, you can right click on the motion link and select select link joins and it shows you the link joins. All right, and there we have it, all motion links created between those parts. And now we can go to the first joint because the first joint drives everything. It's an animate model. And that's how this looks like. That's how this works.